Hi, I'm Marty Nenko. If life feels mundane, it's understandable that we dream, grasping for something to make life more exciting. The dream job, the dream relationship, the dream home, the dream vacation. We may be especially likely to aspire to some dream amid the grayness that COVID restrictions or COVID disease has foisted on us. But as a career and personal coach, advisor, I don't know what I am, who's worked with over 6,000 clients over the past 35 years, I've seen too many people chase dreams only to not only achieve it even partially and perhaps worse, they achieve the dream and still feel empty. Here I make the best case I can for and against chasing the aforementioned common dreams. Let's start with chasing the dream job. First, the pro argument. You spend most of the best hours of your life at work. No one should want to accept a mundane work life, at least without having tried for the dream job. As the old saying goes, shoot for the moon. Even if you don't make it, you'll land among the stars. Just find something you care enough about and are talented enough to make you want to work hard for it. Even if you fail, you'll feel good about having tried. You can reduce your risk by ongoing assessing the probability of your success against the opportunity cost. For example, if you're seeing more and more interest, including financial interest in your artistic work, great. If not, ask yourself what you would otherwise do with the time and money that you have invested and will be investing in that career. Here's the argument against going for the dream career. Enduring contentment, let alone happiness, is less likely to be found even in long shot dream careers than in what can be more easily found in easier to attain careers. What ends up mattering most in finding career contentment is ethical work, stable employment and pay, a decent boss, opportunities to learn, and good co-workers. And those are much more easily found away from the sexy sounding fields like spark, sports, arts, or entertainment. Some of my happiest clients have a decidedly unsexy job. Social security administrator, customer service manager for a utility, scrap metal importer. Now let's turn to chasing the dream relationship. First, the pro argument for chasing a dream relationship. The great relationship suffuses contentment across your life, even when you're not with your partner. Conversely, think of all the misery that accrues from a bad relationship. So make the effort to find and maintain a relationship with an attractive, kind, solvent person who doesn't have a fatal flaw. Have high standards in reaching out to candidates online and in setups, and avoid meeting people in settings in which looks are the overriding first screen, for example, in the supermarket, at a bar, or walking down the street. The con argument for looking for a dream relationship? Most people themselves aren't dream partners. Hold out for that and you may be waiting for Godot. Go not for a dream person, a dream partner, a dream boat, but for your match. Plus, recognize that increasing numbers of people are going to prefer the freedoms of solohood. Now let's turn to chasing the dream home. That also would apply to part of a home. For example, as I saw in a recent ad, your dream kitchen in three weeks. Here is the pro argument for going after the dream home. Yes, home is where the heart is, and for many people, unless the home feels right, or better than merely right, life feels too incomplete, and home is where you and perhaps family will spend so much of life. People who care deeply about home are far more likely to derive enduring pleasure from home, or even the kitchen of your dreams, than on, for example, five-star vacations, diamonds, Rolex watches, the upscale cars, and so on. Here's the argument against going for a dream home. The cost of a so-called dream home, or even a demi-dream home, is inordinate, often forcing the owner to have a lucrative but unrewarding job. Many lucrative jobs pay so well because they're not particularly pleasurable. Insurance sales, controller, bond trader, and tax lawyer come to mind. Or that dream career requires many years of expensive, also not particularly pleasurable, training. Physician and professor come to mind. And that assumes you'll keep such a job for the life of your mortgage. Alas, that's far from certain, with jobs ever less secure these days, whether because of COVID, automation, or offshoring. Also, your investment in the stock market, which you count on at least in part to be paying your mortgage, may be uncertain at best. Better to find less expensive sources of contentment. No, you needn't live in a leaky basement apartment in a war zone. But the one decision to live in a modest to moderate dig, you know, apartment, uh, can, or home, can help you choose the job you want and free you from the worry that comes from owning that dream home. And then there's the nightmare that has occurred to countless dream homeowners 
who, because of just one unanticipated event, like the loss of a job or a health crisis, end up struggling with the payments, the taxes, the insurance, and lose their home, to the family's sadness and to the embarrassment of having to tell everyone that you're, quote, downsizing. And finally, let's turn to whether you should chase the dream vacation. Here's the pro-argument. When asked, what would you do if you had only six months to live? Many people say, I'd travel. They love experiencing different cultures, seeing exotic things, taking photos, buying memorabilia, the overall adventure and growth experience of it all. Some of them say that travel built their confidence. They saw that they could negotiate strange environments. More broadly, many such people speak of treasured memories that last a lifetime. Here is the con argument about going for dream vacations. In a triumph of confirmation bias over reality, many travel buffs tend to forget the negatives. If fair-minded, they would conclude that the benefits were outweighed by the cost, the hassle, the sicknesses, the bad weather, the rip-offs, and so on, plus the opportunity cost, what they could otherwise do with the time and money. Think of all the time and money that you've spent on vacations, and now imagine that you have all that time and money back. Would you spend it on travel or on something else? Or perhaps an answer lies in a different sort of travel. Might seven day trips likely yield more pleasure with less hassle than that eight-day, seven-night airplane trip to a far-flung place? Of course, some dreams are worth chasing, but dreaming implies irrationality. What will yield you more pleasure is a clear-eyed assessment of the probability of achieving the dream, the benefits of der that you would derive, and the financial and human costs, including the opportunity cost. Sometimes it is wise to be coldly rational. In any event, I do thank you for watching. Uh, I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nenko.